Hi there, welcome back to Hoopsa. QPR kept their first clean sheet since March at home yesterday in a nil-nil draw against Bristol City. I was sat in Ellerslie Road, so here are my thoughts on the match. Of course, the big news for Bristol City this week has been the arrival of new manager Liam Manning joining from Oxford United. It's a pretty similar to Michael Beale leaving QPR last season, really. Manning had got off to a flying start this season with Oxford United, with them sitting second place in League One with 11 wins from 15 games. That, of course, made him a prime candidate for the vacant Bristol City job with Nigel Pearson being sacked by the club two weeks ago. That's proved to be a bit of a controversial decision with the Bristol City fans, with some feeling that he'd steadied the ship and had had little financial backing from the owners despite the sales of Alex Scott and Antoine Semenyo over the last two windows, bringing in a collective £33 million. Bristol City of course do have their own financial issues, but the mood seems to be that Pearson had done a good job despite the circumstances. But after a mixed start to the season, with six wins, three draws and six losses, the owners felt it was time to make a long-term change. Now managerless Bristol City beat Sheffield Wednesday 1-0 last weekend. That was their third win in eight games, with our old pal Rob Dickey scoring his second match winner of the season in stoppage time. Now let's talk about how QPR shaped up for Sufuente's first home match. There were three changes to the side that played away at Rotherham. Kakai came in for Reggie Cannon, who picked up a minor knee injury. Jack Colback came in for Dixon Bonner. And Dazelle rejoined the team after his suspension for his red card, taking Elias Chair's place, who himself was unavailable through suspension for five yellow cards. Now of course it's a shame that Cannon and Chair were unavailable for this game and Dixon Bonner himself had had a good full league debut last weekend but we set up pretty similar to how we did against Rotherham with the sort of 4 3 free shape. My biggest concern really was how we were going to create without Chair being available. Now to be honest I really expected this to be a game of fine margins. Bristol City have scored just 16 goals this season, that's only 5 more than QPR and it's the 5th lowest in the division. They've also conceded 16 and that's exactly how the first half played out in honesty. City registered their first shot on on target in the opening 30 seconds, with Mark Sykes drawing a save from Begovic. But QPR settled down after this and really for me dictated a lot of the play in that first half. Paul Smith proved to be a real handful for Cameron Pring down that right hand side but he couldn't quite get his shots off right. He did have an early penalty shout against Zach Viner after putting a cross into the box. I've not actually been able to find a clip of this back yet. It did look a penalty from where I was sitting because the ball sort of stopped unnaturally. It did look like it hit a hand. And there were also a couple of nice movements from Powell and Willock on the opposite wing. Powell was overlapping nicely just as he'd done with Chair against Rotherham. Willock also did look capable of taking his markers on but we are still watching a player getting back up to match fitness and confidence. I still feel like he was missing that slight of injection of pace that he used to have maybe a little bit still wary of previous injury scares. We came closest to scoring the first half when a loose ball from a power free kick fell to Lyndon Dykes, which he volleyed but Wyman was able to block the shot with his body. Dykes otherwise couldn't make the ball stick in this half. He couldn't win headers, he was falling over. When he did manage to collect the ball and lay it off, he was given poor passes to Willock and to Powell. This for me was probably his poorest display of the season and he really didn't offer much in that striker role. I've got to say despite this though, just like last week, there were some spells of some really nice football here. Dazelle, Kakai and Smith playing some lovely little triangles. There was a lot of no-look passes going on around the team couple of scary ones at the back but we do seem to be moving the ball about a lot quicker and getting it out to the wings moving it a bit more sharply we are sometimes very slow in our build-up play so it's clear that Sefuentes has wanted to speed up our game a little bit we're also playing out from the back which can look really nice at times again there are going to be some scary moments from this but it did seem to work well and suit these players it was a reasonable half another dramatic improvement from what we were seeing under Ainsworth but both sides were completely lacking that finishing touch I was also impressed by the way that we pressed off of the ball we we were hunting down in packs, the midfield were working together really nicely and we defended pretty well in that first half. We kept Bristol City very quiet. Now early in the second half, Matty James's deflected shot from outside of the box drew a save from Begovic. But for the next 30 minutes or so, it was QPR that piled on the pressure. Dizel had two close efforts go over the bar and Paul Smith continued to have a lot of joy down the wing but couldn't keep his closest shot on target. Unfortunately though, in the absence of an effective striker and chair, we weren't able to capitalise on this share of the ball that we had for the majority of that second half. And around 75 minutes, the tide did start to turn. The substitutions of Andreas Wyman for Taylor Gardner-Hickman, Anis Mometi for Sam Bell, and Harry Cornick for Tom Conway all had a positive impact for City. They began to play a lot more advanced with their backline moving forwards and started to command a lot more of the ball. 
And with this, the efforts did start to come. They then started to overload more. With Mark Sykes continually getting behind on our left side in those sort of last 20 minutes, dangerously squaring the ball across the box, but no Bristol City player was able to turn the ball in. It was a scramble. It was leaving our defenders a little bit all over the place. In fact, there were multiple poor clearances out of the box, which left the ball on a plate for Bristol City. But again, no one was able to get their shots on target. Rob Dickey himself did threaten to unleash one of his rockets but his shot was blocked, thankfully. But QPR did still have some late chances to win the game. Armstrong, who came on as sub, was taken down in the Bristol City box. I've seen some people thought he oversold this a little bit. For me, it was a penalty, and we've seen them give him for a lot, lot less than that. A marauding Aussie Kikai also had the chance to put a great ball into the box when he decided to bomb ahead of substitute Taylor Richards before following up with maybe the most Kikai cross into the loft that I've ever seen. But credit where credit is due, Kikai did have a very good match yesterday. He defended very well and he played a big part in gaining the point that we got so completely fair play to him after five minutes of stoppage time the game came to an end and the spoils were shared and this was a fair result really both teams lacked the quality in the final third that they needed to take the win in fact, QPR had zero shots on target in the whole match. And again, it's going to depend on your perspective how you see this game. It's still not a home win, but it is a home draw. It's our first clean sheet since March. The football looked better once again. We're getting a lot more of the ball. We had 50% possession, which is probably the record highs that we've had at home this season. And in spells, there was some really nice football here and we were actually trying to win the game. But it's a real shame we didn't get to see this contest with Chair in the side because I think it would have been a different story completely. Marty has tightened that defence up and the outstanding issue here is clear to see Lyndon Dykes is just not good enough for this level and he doesn't fit into this formation that's going to be Marty's biggest challenge how does he get goals out of this team before the January transfer window and that's assuming that there's even going to be any funds that will help him to resolve that for me Dykes needs dropping he's been poor all season every time the ball got played to him and we were in transition he would either give it away fall over or give a poor ball back and completely break the momentum of our play I personally could see Sifuentes moving to a front three of Willock, Chair and Smith in the future a bit similar to what Bill did with Chair, Roberts and Willock. I mean, when you look back at Michael Bill's time when we were top of the championship, Willock had scored six goals, Chair had scored three, he had a load of assists. They're going to be the key to us scoring goals again. Dykes himself actually managed six under Michael Bill. I'm pretty sure two or three of those were penalties, but that display yesterday suggests that that player is long gone. We've now got the international break. De Fuentes now has two weeks to really get his style across to this squad. The improvements are there to be seen, and I'm really excited to see what this side looks like once we come back from the break. Now, Next match is Norwich City away on the 25th of November, so I will see you then. If you have any thoughts yourself, let me know in the comments, and if you've enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers!